Hey guys, welcome to another session of FFBE Global. Today we're going to do the unit intro quest Hyo. I haven't done it yet. Uh, saved it all the way till now. Very heavy trial weekend. And so uh, here are the, the missions. Complete the quest to get 100 Lapis. Use the Limit Burst to get a Rare Summon Ticket. Use Way of the Void to get 3 Mini Power Pots. Use Servant of the Blade to get Star Quartz. Uh, I might have to run this a couple times because my intention for this uh, video is actually to show how to actually use Hyo, like what is his best attack rotations and also at the same time to complete all the missions and also to debunk any misconceptions of true double hand accuracy or double hand accuracy versus evasion okay so um i'm gonna go in first and then we'll uh, we'll kind of go go through it so this is obviously a done live on stream Sublime Data says, I see Hyo with dual wield. No, I don't have anyone with dual wield, I don't think. This Hyo. Yeah, okay, so let me kind of introduce to what we're what we're trying to do today. So one, I will go through the, the move sets and what is best for Hyo. But at the same time, I will uh, also go through um, if you can... Uh, <clears throat> if you can hit evasion units and uh, if uh, high evasion units can even avoid true double hand accuracy. So first things first, I want to show off uh, at least the rotation for how you should be using Hyo. Ideally for any trial that will give you any length of time, let's say you're not uh, locked to um, certain turn counts, so like Omega on a fourth turn, someone gets snorted, uh, <laughs> I think it's turn four, yeah, turn four, and then, uh, or stag trial on turn eight, he becomes almost impossible to kill. Um, first things first, on a seven star heal, at least, you want to use Way of the Void first. Uh, what this does, it will boost attack to self and enables triple blade for two turns. So triple attack, which is what you want to really take advantage of. Since it's a cooldown ability, you will uh, need a certain amount of turns before you can reuse it. So it's not as broken as one may think, since you need to actually waste a full turn doing this. Now, right off the bat, we were at about 2,200 with his self buff. So on a 7 star with his trust master, when he enters the battle, he buffs himself by 100%. So even though you, I walked in with I think about 1,900, uh, 1900 attack, somewhat like that, uh, I was at 2,200. Now with his self buff, this is a 200% attack buff. I'm at 25, uh, 2515. Same with this heal as well. This is our uh, free heal. Or the the one that you can uh, try out, so you can see the attack there at 12, 1257. And use Way of the Void, 200%, and that's a 14, 1460. So we're gonna take a look at actually his gear. I want to double check something. Uh, okay, so he doesn't. Well, he does have uh, his own TMR on at seven star, so he has a 100% true double hand, which means he has a 25% accuracy. Uh, I'll get into the accuracy thing in a bit. All right, and then. Uh, so Way of the Void is used first. Now this Hyo is my third one. If you watched my poll video, you would have seen that I pulled for I got three Hyos on a final 11k step. Um, so he won't have uh, all that uh, cooldown abilities as you can see, but he will have a uh, double blade. He'll have all the uh, usual hits, hitting moves. So I'm just gonna guard for this turn as I'm uh, showing um, the actual rotation you want to do for Hyo. And so after this, ideally what you want to do is have uh, an elemental weapon, uh, hopefully uh, a lightning or a fire weapon, since Hyo can self-imperil. Uh, he can imperil uh, the enemy with uh, fire and lightning, for fire or lightning by 60%. 60% uh, imperil, which means that you'll do about, uh, uh, I mean, 0 0.6 times or 0.6% uh, more damage. 60% more, uh, yeah, more damage. Um, so I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna, because I have a lightning weapon on, I will use a voltage blade. Okay, so that's uh, technically the best course of action right now. So that will imperil lightning by 60%. And then two servant of the blade because you have triple cast on. Now, um, this should do more damage. If you have a fire sword, obviously uh, use flame blade instead. So the equivalent of voltage blade. They're uh, perfect chainable, so um, these uh, these skills, Voltage Blade, Flame Blade, Servant of the Blade, they're all Orlando chaining family uh, skills. 
which uh, later on I will make a theorycraft video on uh, heroes chaining families and so uh, you'll be able to know how to set up your team compositions um, but we're gonna do that right now pretty sure this should one shot the cactuar so we won't be able to complete all missions and uh So as you see, you can see the weakness there because you've imperiled the 60% 60, 60 on the first turn. Karmic Nova asks, why not use Phantom Blade? Uh, Phantom Blade is available later though. So we're going to go back in. And I'm going to explain again the rotation. If there was a longer battle, you would be able to see the effects of this. I'm going to go with this here. And I'm going to go and depart. So as a... Uh, as Sublime... Wait, as Karmic Nova asked... Hold on one second here. I pull up something. As Karmic Nova asked, why not use Phantom Blade? Because Phantom Blade is a stronger, also Orlando, backloaded hit chaining skill but it's a cooldown skill it's available on turn five so you have to wait all the way to five turns and it's another five turn cooldown it imperils fire and lightning resistance by 100 percent so yes you do want to work that in the rotation and so what i would advise is uh, go way of the void on turn one and i'm just going to guard everyone here um turn one use way of the void and in turn 2, you want to triple blade and imperil on the first turn. A oh, one of your heroes. If you're running duplicate heroes, make sure you're triple casting Servant of the Blade for one. And the other one, do the imperil first. So go uh, like Voltage Blade again, and then Servant of the Blade, Servant of the Blade. Do that on your first rotation. And by turn... So by turn 3, because you have two turns for your uh, way of the void so you would have triple blade again you want to go triple blade servant of the blade servant of the blade servant of the blade because the imperil should be up at this point so voltage blade and flame blade does their elemental uh, imperil for three turns so keep that in mind you started from turn two so by turn four the imperil should be gone uh, i kind of want to imperil him just to actually see but i think we're too strong I think we're too strong, but let me try uh, actually using my hero. My hero is the weakest right now, so let me do that. We're gonna be a bit uh, lost in the turn count here, but uh, you should have a three turn imperil. And then by the next turn, you should be at turn four. Uh oh. Right, here's a thousand needles. Okay, so now you wouldn't have. Uh, you wouldn't have, um, you would still have the imperil for one more turn. So what you want to do is go double blade, servant of the blade, servant of the blade. Or what I could, I could suggest is you can use improved stance at this point. Um, so by this turn, double blade, servant of the blade, servant of the blade means that you get a bit more attack in this turn. But if you use um, improved stance, one, it would it saves your MP because uh, his MP regen is terrible so I'm gonna do this basically you want to wait out to turn 5 so I'm gonna go up here what that does is it it removes all debuffs or breaks on yourself so if you're broken in that turn uh, you get a triple cast on the next turn um, and you you remove it so it set up, sets up for triple triple blade for one turn only but we really only need it for one turn so you could go triple blade now phantom of the blade which does a way higher damage mod it's a 2.8 times physical damage with a 50 percent ignore defense so that means it's a 5.6 5.6 times with a backloaded hit of 5.6 so it does immense damage plus it's 100 percent fire and lightning imperil so you definitely want to work this in now i can triple uh, triple attack it with a two a servant of the blaze this would do a lot more damage now obviously this character doesn't have enough hp for us to really even see the effects of it but that is the rotation you want to do and again ideally you want to chain heroes so i'm going to show the damage output again
So let me go one more time here. So we're going to finish off the limit burst one in this. But I'm going to take this heal. And again, as I've explained in previous videos, why backloaded chainers? This is what, if you're a new player and uh, you're looking for who to save for, make sure when you're uh, looking at reviews and whatnot, make sure you keep an eye on backloaded, backloaded chaining. Because as I've explained in other videos, it really does um, does way more damage because it's a separate modifier count. So usually if, uh, if a skill has, let's say, 7 hits and it says like a 5 times mod, it's 7 hits but the 5 times mod is divided within the 7. So it's 5 times or rather, yeah, 5 times mod divided by 7. So each hit does that amount of the modifier um, from, your, uh, from your total attack after post buffs. But a backloaded hit does, at least for uh, Hyo's backload, it's um, 6 hit of a, s a certain modifier and then the final hit as the full modifier. So you actually get an immense, uh, immense amount of power at the very end. So I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to go uh, Servant of the Blade, Servant of the Blade, Servant of the Blade. And this one will go triple cast, Servant of the Blade, Servant of the Blade, Servant of the Blade. And my 6 star heal will go double blade, Voltage Blade, and then Servant of the Blade. I'm going to go and uh, guard. And actually, I'm going to use a limit burst on this one. Um, so I can complete it. So we don't have to uh, do it again. But it will break the chain sort of, so... Let's see if I can do it first. He shouldn't be able to kill this Cactuar because uh, my my Titus isn't really set up, really set up uh, for attacking. All right, here we go. So we're gonna chain them all right now, and you ideally want to be chaining with a duplicate heal. As you can see, that uh, cap chain cap at the end there does ex extraordinary amount of damage. And that's really what you want to go for because uh, backloaded hits, it's building off the chain. So for those of you who know, chains do have uh, modifiers as well. Elemental spark chaining will get to your max modifier, uh, chaining modifier quicker than any sort of other chain. And then uh, comes elemental and then comes spark chain or spark chain comes first and then elemental. And then no elemental chain, no spark chain that uh, I think it takes like 16 hits before you can cap it. But basically that's what you want to take advantage of. And the very last thing I want to showcase is true double hand versus evasion. So once uh, evasion units were really, really annoying, really annoying in the arena, now it shouldn't be a problem. So I'll show you guys uh, what I mean. So my hero is fully decked out with TDH gear. Okay, so at a seven star with his TMR on because he has a trust ability at seven star. He actually gets a uh, 100% true double hand with 25% accuracy when wielding, uh, wielding one weapon in one hand. Okay, so either it's a two-handed weapon or it's a one-handed weapon. It doesn't matter. Martial glove each one gives 50% true double hand and also 25% accuracy. So that's already 75% with those three, three uh, equipment. Two accessories and one clothes. Buster style gives 100% true double hand, which then caps 300% true double hand. That's the max cap right now. So let's say if you have like a Nalu or Tomb Raider TMR that have a 50% true double hand in it, it won't affect uh, anymore because you're capped at 300. But Buster style has another 25% true double hand, which means I'm at 100% accuracy. Okay, it gives a weapon accuracy if I single wield either a one-handed weapon or a two-handed weapon. Now this Hyo, I wanted to bring up because I gave him exactly 50% accuracy. Buster style, again, 100% true double hand with 25% accuracy. Double hand with 50% attack when wielding a one-handed weapon. So don't try this with a two-handed weapon with like, let's say, Conrad's TMR, Squall's TMR, or even later Cloud's S TMR. Um, but it does work with one-handed weapons if you uh, single wield it. So this has 50% on this heal. And then I'm not even going to bother using the AI heal there or the computer, uh, yeah, our friend unit. So Noctis here, I'm going to show off his gear a bit. Noctis here, I built him for exactly, exactly 100% evasion. He has 20% innate uh, evasion. Protect Grappler, Ring of the Lucii for another 50%. That's 70. And then 80, 90, 80 for Assassin's Vest. 90, another 10% for Eskuchan. Hold on, wait. I built him a bit more than that. Actually, I built him a bit more than uh, 
100%. I think you'll be able to for 120% um, evasion. Swordbreaker for 5% evasion. And Quick Assault for 10. Uh, Turbulent Evasion for 5. And then uh, True Spirit of Freedom for 15%. I think I built him for a bit over. I didn't compensate for his innate evasion. That's that's okay. Okay, so I was just saying most people would run 100% evasion unit. Well, we're gonna test to see if uh, my hero with a 50% uh, attack accuracy can hit uh, can hit uh, Noctis, and then the 100% uh, hero if he can hit Noctis. Let me double check how much uh, accuracy this one would have. So this one would have only 25%. So actually, let's let let us do use the AI. Let's target uh, Noctis first. Let's use the AI. So 25% accuracy, he is down. Okay, so I'm gonna re revive him. So 25% accuracy also means a 25% chance of hitting him. It doesn't mean a full evasion unit can just evade it. So I know it, it could kind of like break logic because you might think, uh, you might think, uh, 100% evasion means perfect evasion, right? That's not the case. It does still work as uh, work with numbers here. I'm gonna dual uh, dual cast re-raise. I'm gonna keep it on my Noctis and the Titus for this entire session. Maybe target target Noctis again. I'm gonna try it again. So yeah, so you see you can miss. So 25% accuracy means a 25% chance of hitting 100% accuracy. Um. I, I cannot confirm whether or not over overshooting your evasion actually helps the chances of living if you have 100% accuracy. Um, I'm gonna try with a 50% accuracy on this heal on this Noctis. It's missed. Now with my heal, um, my 7 star heal, he has 100% accuracy like I said. So realistically, even if Noctis could dodge at 120% um, evasion, he uh, he still might get hit. So I'm gonna try this again. We're gonna keep uh, our re-raise up. We're gonna guard with these two. And here we go, let's try this out one more time with my hero. Seems as it's getting hit. I'm gonna do a trial run three of three. Oh yeah, Fina. Fina man, Fina's really gotta stop countering on this one. I gotta, I should kill her. Um, alright, let's go again. One more time, 3 of 3, we're gonna test this out. Target, and uh, oops. Clear target for a sec. Yeah. Now target. Yeah, 3 of 3, he can't dodge it, so I'm gonna go and uh, reset. Okay, so now Tidus is the one I wanna try out. So for this, for this uh, session, counted as like a myth busters kind of thing. So Tidus has a 30% innate evasion. Technically you could go with someone with higher evasion, but then you might lose out on some equipment. So like you need to equip shield if it's like Chiz Chizuru, I think has 40% innate uh, physical evasion, but uh, you'll lose a bit if you like, you know, remove uh, in a, an accessory slot or something for a shield that can give more evasion. Either way, this Tidus has 150% evasion. Two Ring of the Lucy Eye for another 50%. With that 30%, that's 80. Soccer Jersey is 10% evasion. That's 90. Gladiator Shield for 5%. Wing Edges for another 5%. That's uh, 100 right there. Raven Beret for 5%. And uh, True Spirit of Freedom, what I want to calculate in there, that's already 120%. Spirit of Freedom for another 10%. Quick Assault for another 10%. And then Evade for another 10%. That's 150% on this Tidus. So we're going to do our uh, experiments on him right now. I'm going to go and target him. I'm going to use the 25% Accuracy Heal. And it still hit him. So as you can see, it's not, uh, it's not foolproof here. So I'm going to go and uh, re-raise on Tidus. It only gives him a higher survivability chance, but it doesn't guarantee it. 50% uh, 50% heal goes next. Let's try this. And it still killed him, so we have a 50% chance. So we're really playing with some RNG. I'm going to guard with this one because I know that he's going to die. Okay, I'm going to guard here, and I'm going to re-raise on Tidus. She's dual casting. It's okay. I try. Let's try it one more time. So Tidus should have technically should have a higher higher chance of surviving. Yep. So this time he's evaded that. Let's try it again. 
All right, and then we're gonna try. Ooh, <laughs> I use the LB. Use an LB on Titus. Overkill. All right, here we go. So 100%. We're gonna try this three out of three. So just saying right off the bat, if you're trying to evade a true double hand units in the arena, um, good luck with that because uh, if you even overshoot with 150% evasion like Titus, there's still a small chance you're still going to die. As you can see, these heroes uh, are able to hit him even with like a 25% evasion. So I'm gonna actually re-raise on him for a second. I gotta clear the target before I do that. Okay, let's try it again. 25% still kills him. Target. 50% kills him. Ooh, doesn't kill him because I'm too weak. Alright, and then this one should be able to kill him. And then one more time. Whoa, dodged. Okay, so now that, that confirms something then. Uh, even at 100%. So it seems that the system works that uh, you need to match um, the accuracy versus the actual evasion. So at 100% accuracy, my heal, as you can see, I missed Tidus at 150%. So there's still a chance. So that's interesting to figure out this mechanic once and for all. And of course, uh, the Cactuar Cactu is going to miss Tidus there. We're going to try one more time. Let's uh, actually wait. Uh, sorry, I'm going to re-raise. Let's do it again. 25% accuracy. Missed. 50% accuracy. Missed. And let's see if he can dodge this 100% accuracy. Again, as you saw, it did work. So he can dodge it. That's real. That's actually really funny. Um, so knocked is here uh, because he has no... Uh, it, no, um, what's it called? Accuracy at all. He's uh, obviously not going to get it. So anyways, let's finish this off. Finish off this video here. We're going to finish with an Owadi Da and call it done. So um, <laughs> let me do this. Bad Silla says the quick hit people need backloaded chains. Yes, I believe Jack's uh, quick hit has backload, so that that's what makes him really really good. Ray Ruby says Titus gets the most evasion. I believe he can equip most evasion items. Ah, I see. Okay, so it was a good choice then. Yes, yeah, I think I think Ling has a uh, thirty or forty percent evasion. But uh, she she can't equip certain gear, so you would have to waste ability slots for like equip light shield or something or heavy shield. Um, yeah. Okay. So, anyways, let's end that off there. One last thing, um, I would say is yes. If you're doing this in the arena, make sure you have two heal. So two heal, go two double hand and uh, dual cast dual cast a ruthless blade, which is Onion Knight's chaining family. Uh, it would do uh, six hits. Uh, I believe it's six hits. Yeah, six hits, um, single target, but then six hits, dual casts. So that's twelve hits AOE to everyone. So um, most likely it will wipe out most people. And then Awaken Rain can't cover it either because it's a physical attack. Um, something just a tip for you guys in the arena, and as I've seen uh, in the arena this week as well, everybody's been running heal and rain since they get bonus anyway. But uh, those uh, all the units are really good anyway. Um, anyways, I'm gonna end off that video here. Hopefully that has been helpful for those who are new players to know how to use CG heal, and even if you did pull him, and you got a seven star. How good he is, all right? Maybe some some of you may not know how good he is right now in the meta, but he is really really good. Anyways, let's end off this off here. If you guys have Discord, check out the Discord server, follow me on Twitter, and subscribe to YouTube if you haven't. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.